All right, once again in life, there was an absurdly cool show that was canceled long before its time should have been up, and that causes people like me to get on their cameras and tell you how cool it was. <laughs> Dollhouse. All right, so Dollhouse was created by the creator of Firefly and the director of the upcoming Avengers movie, Joss Whedon. As you all know, huge fan of that guy. This is one of the reasons why. So Dollhouse came out around 2008 and it starred Eliza Dushku. And from the ads, all I knew is it showed Eliza Dushku sleeping in this really comfy place and walking around in what looked like a utopia of a building and then going out and kicking ass. So you guys, if you saw that, thought what I thought and you thought, ah, oh, shit. It's Charlie's Angels. Secure that shit, I'm here to eliminate those theories. This show, Dollhouse, is not like Charlie's Angels. You need to know that. Why? Because the show's a lot cooler than Charlie's Angels. The concept is there's this really huge organization called the Rossum Corporation. It's kinda like, think the Umbrella Corporation for Resident Evil is the Rossum Corporation in Dollhouse. They have an absurd amount of money, an absurd amount of tech. What they do is they take a person who volunteers to be an active or a doll. They take that person's consciousness and their mind and they put it onto a hard drive. Now you just have the body that has the most basic of mental functions. They don't have any will, they don't have any desire, they're just blocks of cheese with a pulse. You can kind of say they don't have a soul while they're in their active state, while they're dolls. And then someone will call this company and be like, oh hey, I need a person to be able to do this for whatever reason. And then the brain tech guy in the show, his name is Topher, he will construct a complete set of memories with a complete personality and then upload it onto the brain of this doll and now this person is a completely different human being. They can make people whatever they want and they do this in the dollhouse and these people get rented out for a bunch of different reasons did your wife die it's okay they can take eliza douche probably an upgrade and mentally recreate your wife and then now you can have her for like a weekend need someone to do an assassination that's fine they can make the perfect most efficient assassin ever and they can go assassinate someone bank robbery done nothing point is they can make anyone for any reason whatsoever as long as you pay up and what i liked about this is you can tell joss whedon had so many concepts and so many directions to take this show that he never got to. He alluded to some of them, but never got to do it before the show was canceled. Like in one episode, they kind of mentioned the concept that for the right price, someone can just take their consciousness and put it into someone else's body and well, there. You were an 80 year old with cancer, now you're a young 20 year old. The person who owned that body, doesn't matter. You paid 500 million bucks, you can do whatever you want. Really cool directions, a really cool moral dilemma with this show. And what I liked about the show is although it was a little episodic at first, you know, Eliza Dushku just becomes someone else and goes out and does a job and comes back. They used that concept to set up a bigger story. One of the bigger stories is that there was an active, his name was Alpha. He freaked out one day and just slashed up a bunch of people and left. But these actives, these dolls don't have any impulse or need or any real cohesive thought. So how did that even happen? There's this whole mental evolution thing going on and the whole concept of can you actually take everything that makes a person what they are and wipe it completely out or does some of it remain? And you get a cop that is just looking into this. He's like, this dollhouse is real. No one knows that this dollhouse is real. It's like, Fight Club. You don't talk about Fight Club, but certain people know about it. And this cop, his name is Paul Ballard, and he's like, no, this is human slavery. This can't happen. A lot of other people don't see it that way, but that really is what it is. In season one alone, there are like three twists where I was like, dude, that's awesome. That is good filmmaking or TV making. It's the same concept, really. Thank you, Joss Whedon, for being smarter than people like me, because I can't think of this shit. This is cool. And the coolest part, the coolest part of the entire thing is after season one aired and we all were like, oh yeah, I like Dollhouse. Cool concept and alpha and I like to see where they're going to take the next season. That's cool. Cool, 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 cool. At Comic-Con, he showed everyone an episode called Epitaph One and it totally took a shit on everything you thought you knew about Dollhouse in a very cool way. The best way Way, really. All right, this is how I would describe what Epitaph One kind of was for Dollhouse. Imagine you buy a truck and you're so happy with that truck. You're like, this truck is so cool. It's so efficient. I like it. It's got some really cool gear in it, some really cool tech. Glad I bought the truck. And then you find out one day that your truck is actually Optimus Prime himself. That was what Epitaph One was for Dollhouse. It was the coolest thing. And in a nutshell, without any spoilers, Epitaph One really kind of gave you glimpses as to where the show was going and the end game of the show. And if you don't get intrigued by it, I don't even know what to say. Thank you, Josh Sweden, for being smarter than people like me. All in all, this show's a really interesting glimpse into human nature. That's what I would see Dollhouse as. By the end, it's a really interesting glimpse into what technology does to civilization and is executed in a really smart way. I personally think Dollhouse was like the smartest show on TV when it was out. I'm telling you, he had some really sweet directions to go and I'm glad that he got to show some of them before the show was canceled. It almost felt like in season two, it was announced, okay, Dollhouse is gonna come to an end. Fox has canceled 
canceled it because that's what Fox does. They cancel really cool shit. And then the next five episodes after that leading to the end were just the coolest episodes ever. You can stream the show on Netflix right now if you have Netflix, the entire series, season one, two, epitaph one, epitaph two. The show does come to a conclusion. He was able to wrap up his story, which I like. It's not Charlie's Angels, I promise. Whole lesson of the entire show, simply put, one sentence. Kids play with matches, they burn the house down. So have you seen Dollhouse? What did you think of it? Comment below, let me know. If you haven't seen Dollhouse, well, I guess you gotta watch it so you can go ahead and comment below and let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you wanna see more, click right here to see more.